everyone, Christian here, and I wanted to do a vlog that had been requested by many viewers, and that is <clears throat> germinating seed uh, it, in a closed container method, which I've done before, but I kind of want to go through all of the steps of it. I've kind of just shown, you know, the end result or just the one, uh, you know, just one, pick, one part of it. So this is a, kind of a three-part process. So when you collect seed off of a palm or you receive seed from a friend or from a vendor, um, you want to make sure first that the palm seed fruit is uh, well cleaned. Uh, subtropical palms are going to are going to usually have uh, shells that are going to need cracked um, if they're uncleaned, and tropical palms are going to have fruit that's going to need to be kind of cleaned off. So uh, these are both subtropical. This is uh, Rapidophyllum hystrix, the needle palm. This is kind of where we're shelling them out. This is an unshelled seed. It has fruit on it that you want to clean off, but I received them cleaned. And you can hear the crack and then you just kind of break it open and the seeds in there. And these are the end result right there. So right here I have a, a larger seed, but still um, it's, it's actually tropical where it lives. But um, because it, it grows in a semi-arid climate, it kind of is, uh, deals with a lot of drought. It has this kind of leathery uh, hus husk on it that's essentially fruit but it it's not very thick or meaty or anything like that so these will come come off the rule of thumb on this is if you can break it in your hand with the, you know, the pressure of your thumb and finger together then it's uh, then it's safe to there we go a little closer then it's safe to take off but don't try and crack any in a vice there's a couple species that it can benefit but um i really wouldn't recommend it there's some uh, species that, like such as butea people will try and crack um, to try and get better germination but I just don't think it's a good idea I think just using high heat is just easier and just less strenuous so once you have clean seed such as you know if I were to clean this out here just get it out of here so that's the clean seed right there uh, not all seeds gonna be that easy but once you have that seed the next step is going to be putting them in a germination media. If you feel that your seed is not perfectly fresh, um, go ahead and soak it for just a few hours in, uh, you know, some kind of some water, clean water. It doesn't have to be distilled. In fact, it, it's better that it's not distilled. Any kind of mineralized water is fine. Your tap water is going to be fine. Um, so after, you know, a soaking for a few hours, make sure that water is like, you know, uh, about 80 Fahrenheit or about 25 Celsius. You don't want to soak them in cold water. It just doesn't doesn't really help the embryo want to think that it wants to come out of its shell. So what we want to do is we want to accelerate the process of getting it out of its shell. So I'm going to go into where my heat mat area is, and we'll be right back. All right, so we're back, and this is going to be step two of the process. Um, here I have all of the – I have put the seed in baggies, and if, you, if I knock this a little bit, you can see the condensation will kind of come apart. I don't want to hit it too hard. There's actually germinated seed in there, but if I lift it up, it might start to break. You can see inside, but I'll actually open this up. The, the light, the flash is actually making it harder to see. But in this baggie, it is uh, long fibered orchid moss. Let me see if I can find a bag that, there we go. So you can see it's, it's very moist, long fibered orchid moss. And I keep it uh, moist because what will happen is this heat mat, this is the heat mat here. And there's a thermostat, and right now it's at about 91 degrees Fahrenheit, about 30, was that 31 Celsius, something like that. I'm just off the top of my head. So we have this long fibered orchid moss. Uh, it's good to label the seed, the species. So this is uh, Copernicia flens, and it shows the date at which I, I sowed it, or it was sown. And uh, so it's you know just under a month in there, and they're still germinating. So, um. There aren't any germinated seeds in there, but when you lay this on the heat mat, make sure you have plenty of moisture in there because what will happen is you can lay the, it one way, but you can't get the entire surface area of the orchid moss on the, the mat. So it'll automatically condense, you know, the condensation will come to the top and you're going to get what, what I call a hot spot on the bottom. You'll have dry moss and you'll have a dry seed that isn't really getting any moisture with the heat that is uh, being supplied by the heat well, it's getting heat, but there's no moisture going with it, so it will actually start to dry the seed out, and you could actually cook the embryo. So I wouldn't go, unless you know your um, 
your seed very well. I wouldn't go above, say, 95, 100 degrees. Copernicus can handle about 100 degrees, but my sensor is a little bit off. It's definitely 90 and 95 in there. So in this bag, you can actually see there's a few germinated seed. These are actually some of the leftovers that I had when I picked out most of the other germinated ones. But what you want to do is you want to get about an inch of the radical, the first part of the root that comes out there. You can see right there the, the seed and the radical on those two right there. And when they're on the side of the, uh, the bag like that, you don't want to leave them in there too long. You don't want three or four inch roots because you will uh, start to get weird curving of the roots and it will be hard to pot up. And so you want to get them into a pot, um, you know, as soon as you can, or an area where you can just have the root grow directly downward. So the key points of that are make sure you label your bags with a date and species. Otherwise, you'll get very confused um, unless you really know your, your seeds. And, you know, make sure that they're nice and warm. Uh, make sure that they're moist as well. And just keep them on there. Usually it takes most... I started having germination on these and within seven days, they can take up to a month for some species. For example, I have Cedar Statues Renda, which is from December 3rd, and I don't expect those to germinate for another month at least. It's just the nature of the seed. You kind of have to know what you're looking for, but you can leave them on there. And the best part about long fibered orchid moss, why I use it is if there's any bad seed in there that you happen to not catch from, um, you know, if you, when you soak your seed, you want to, Make sure that you take all the floaters out. And if you have any bad seed, you should know right away. And if there is any extra bad seed, it will it will mold in here, but it'll only be localized. Where if you have it in soil, which is where those actually are, um, the mold can spread throughout the bag and can actually be a little bit, can actually, you know, start rotting all the seeds, which you obviously don't want. So I'm going to put these back here and we're going to go to step three. All right, so we are here in my big bag of, or sorry, big bowl of long fibered moss. And again, you can see this is used, uh, I use this very versatilely, or in a, in a versatile fashion, I should say. Um, I took out this germinated seed to kind of give you an idea of what to do and what not to do. So when you have these ones with the one, like less than one inch radicals, those are perfect for putting in soil. Just make sure you keep them moist when you want to go ahead and pot them up with the root obviously down. With this right here, you got a little bit of a problem because you got it curving twice. So what I would do is I want to always make sure the seed, the initial drop, sorry, initial drop is going to go um, down into the soil. So you pot it like that and it'll find its way down into the soil. It's been laying like this for a couple days, unfortunately. So you can see it's actually started to grow uh, downward. So it needs to get repotted. So unfortunately, some of these are going to be, look kind of weird when they go in. There's nothing really wrong with that other than you will have a little more difficult time like potting it up, making sure you do, these seeds can get, these remote germinators can get a little bit uh, brittle when they're younger and uh, you don't want to put too much weight on the bottom of the root because you can break it and that will kill the seed almost instantly. So um, if you do have uh, adjacent germinators, um, it's a little bit more forgiving because you can see the spike coming up right away and the roots are usually not as large. So you can actually let them sit in the moss in the baggie uh, a little bit longer. But you wanna, with these remote germinators, you wanna use a pot that's gonna be at least six inches deep, preferably nine to 12 inches. Um, I mean, one gallon pots are fine if that's what you can find, but the deep pots are you know, something that I use, especially for a little bit more uncommon seed, like such as, this is Copernicia phalens, for, or Copernicia phalensis. And uh, I would also use it for these uh, Livestone Alfredii as well. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much, I mean, I don't have the potting up part. It's, it's pouring out outside. I, there's some, I might do like an outdoor potting up and seeing where these grow, um, seeing how these grow as they come along. So once I get these potted up, I'll kind of do a vlog on that. But the baggy method, if you don't have a heat mat, you can use anything that is going to be going to uh, take off heat. So if you have a cable box, the top of your refrigerator, maybe your modem, something like that is going to uh, accelerate the germination process. But those heat mats aren't too expensive if you're going to get into germinating seeds. They're about, I think that was $45 shipped and that included the thermostat. 
uh, off of Amazon. It's called Vivo Sun. It's the 20 by 48 one. And no, I'm not getting paid to tell you about that. So um, anyway, uh, that's going to be about it for this, the baggy method. And I wanted to, you know, people wanted to see how that is done. And uh, this, these seeds here are kind of in purgatory where they're going to be potted up, but the weather is a little too rough outside to kind of just leave them outside at the minute. So, um, yeah, I, you know, the most important ingredients are heat, moisture, and this, the long fibered orchid moss. You can use other things such as uh, coir, like cocoa coir. You can use uh, peat moss, but it's a little bit more sketchy. It can get moldy very easily. It holds a little bit too much water. And this stuff just, it holds just the right amount of water and you can really kind of uh, control what it can hold that water, that perfect amount for quite some time. And it uh, really re uh, reduces the mold issues. So anyway, I hope that vlog was informational and helpful to you. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and want to see more palm related vlogs, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any more questions about uh, the baggy method or closed container method, then um, go ahead and uh, leave a comment down below and I'll get to you guys and gals as soon as I can. And thanks for watching.